Trinity Radio is on. on. The entertainment show that gets you up close and personal with today's hottest stars. Here's your host, Navelle J. Lee. I'm Navelle J. Lee. In case you didn't know who I am, I'm supposed to introduce myself at the beginning of these things, and I don't necessarily do that often, so I kind of forget, but that's who I am. And I love talking to this guy whenever he's around, whether it's on the show or not, if if not in person. And every single time, even even before we started this conversation, we were texting, and it was just basically put Shank away or grab Shank out. And it's just like this is our normal mo in every. Single I don't even know how that started. Um, it's and it's. I don't remember the first time, you know, and it's really funny because you and I do this constantly on Twitter and on Facebook, and it's it's like I always wonder what other people are thinking when they read our messages to each other. They think that we have this, like, psycho hostility, <laughs> and they don't realize that, you know, it's a term of affection in our world, and when I say, do this or I'll shank you, translated, it's like, I love you, Nivelle. How was your day at work? And that's likewise. That's what it is. So, you know, it's, that's the secret code of Michael Caruso and Nivelle Lee. You know, shank, shank deliciousness. It was, it's just, it's, it's right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly the perfect explanation for it. I think it actually started because I saw something on the vanity and you told me not to tweet it out. And you said that if I ruined the ending, you'd shank me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay. That's, it, that's fair. It was the it was the finale of the show the of the last season, and I watched it during the day because I normally watch it at night. So mm-hmm. this was the first time I've actually watched it when it was light out and I wasn't a, vamp- a vampire. So when I watched it and I was tweeting it, he literally sends me a message saying, "Don't you dare tweet this show out right now. If you do, I will shank you." And then ever since then, it just breathe the life of its own and it hasn't stopped since and now everybody just looks at it and they're going like god what the hell is wrong with you two and i'm what like the what the hell is going on with these people <laughs> it's, it's you know it's we hear the sirens in the background i live in downtown la and it's always it's always some kind of various siren or, or police car or something of like course. that i feel like i'm in paris every time i wake up um you know, it's it's hard. You wanna you wanna not spoil things because I mean I think it's safe to say that everybody watches everything on their own time and we live in a mega spoiler culture and it's 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 kind of a it's kind of a, a futile effort to try to keep everything under wraps. But we do our best. So, you know what yes. can you do? Yes, yes. And I, I, I was a good person. I didn't ruin it. So luckily the no, shank. You were brave. You were, I was, I was good. People really respectful. They're really, really respectful about Well, when you it. get and somebody that threatens you with a shank, of course you're going to be respectful. So <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a well-placed threat to get people to do what you ask. But here's, here's the flip side. I'm very lucky and I'm very flattered and I am eternally grateful that people – love what I do enough to even want to talk about it in the first place. So that's never, it's never a negative when people get excited by something that you've written that they see. And I think that's mm-hmm. just the greatest compliment. It doesn't make me any less, you know, you know, not wanting anything spoiled, but it's a wonderful problem to have. It's, 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 you know, it's a grateful thing. Yes. And I am so glad that you're back with a brand new show you know, obviously, there's a lot of Divinity fans out there. So, for those who watch this show, August 27th, we're literally about a month away. Before yeah, this. Monday. Monday is the one month mark. And if you go on Monday to Winterthorn.com, uh, we will be releasing a little something special to kick off. Monday is actually Martha's birthday. Um, August uh, the this Monday is, is Martha Madison's birthday. And so we're going to celebrate uh, the one month uh, and the, uh, the – I'm, like, I'm rambling here like an idiot. I apologize to everybody listening. We're celebrating Martha's birthday and the one month to the release of Winter to Learn by, by putting a little something new up on the site. And I will say to anybody listening that um, the soap fans are really going to get a kick out of what we put out there. Um, I think they're really going to enjoy this. So I'm hoping everybody stops by and uh, checks it out on Monday. 
Of course we are. This is exactly what we're going to do here. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm mean, i just telling you now, I'm going to be watching it because if I don't, I'm going to get in trouble. But, <laughs> but no, much. no, seriously, I will be watching it, of course, and coincides with Anthony Geary's last day on GH. So I'm throwing that little shout out in there. Look how that worked oh, is out. That, is, that, is that his last day on Monday? Uh-huh. Look how that oh, worked wow. out. Oh, wow. See? See, we could work that into it, too. Like... Well, after you get done watching Terror Hospital, head to winterthorn.com and then watch a little something something before Absolutely. it premieres in one month and celebrate Martin I had, Madison's uh, birthday. I have a funny Anthony Gary story. I had, um, when we cast Kevin Spiritus, who's in Winterthorn, yes. um, Kevin and I went out for a lunch meeting to talk about the character and everything, and we're having lunch, and in walks Anthony Geary, and I... I happened to just turn around for a minute, and I was like, holy shit, Anthony Gary just walked in here. <laughs> it, was, it was just like one of those weird moments where you're like, I'm talking about a new soap that I'm doing, and Anthony Gary walks in, and maybe, maybe that was my good luck charm, my good juju. <laughs> I don't know. It was like, you know, an omen sent from the soap gods. Like, There's that good mojo wow, working. I'm, I'm talking about Winterthorn, and Anthony Gary is standing right over there in the same restaurant. This is a good day. Yes, that's that mo that good mojo working in right there. See? It's good mojo. That's it's that good, good mojo. mojo. So for those <clears throat> that, those that don't know what Winter Thorn is about, tell them what it's about. Sure. So, you know, for anybody that was a Divanity fan, and I did love my Divanity more than life itself. Winter Thorn is a very very different show. Um, it's a four episode series it kind of plays out almost like one of those big mini series from the 80s it takes mm -hmm. place over a 10 year time span so we have throughout the entire run um it's it's a modern storyline that runs parallel with flashbacks which basically shows the rise of miranda winterthorne played by days of our lives martha madison um as the the head of this family and it shows how she comes into power as the head of this family and the family is a family of candy makers. And there's a little twist, though, because a lot of people think that it's just about a family that makes candy. And that's only really part of the truth of what this show is actually about. There is something in the candy. And that's really the core of what Winterthorn is all about. So the other kind of switcheroo that we've done with the show is that this is a, this is a family that is run by women. Women have complete control and complete power over everything in this little mini micro world. So whereas with typical television, you would see the men running the family and the business and everything like that, and the women being nurturing and supportive, well, we flipped all that. And we've got the women are in power, the women are in complete control, and the men are the ones that stay home. They're in the kitchen. They're raising the kids. They're doing all of that stuff. So... This is really kind of a, a way of, of, of kind of celebrating the power of women and, and showing them doing all of the things that, that men typically get to do in television or movies and, and really giving that to the women and showing the many layers of women and what they're capable of doing. So they do amazing things. They do some not so nice stuff. They, they are running their company and they're, they're making a lot of difficult choices that are typically given over to the men to make, the women get to make them. And we get to see the men in their lives supporting them and fighting for them and doing whatever it takes to make sure that their, their wives remain in power. You know, it's, it's, and it's interesting as you say that because, you know, a lot of us on social media always want to see something, whether it's on television or online, what have you, of women in control, women in power, and you're actually yeah. giving us that. You know, there's been... So many years, what I want to see strong women, I want to see powerful women running whatever it is that they're running on television or in movies or in, on, on online shows. And, and, and you bringing that to the forefront, I think that's going to be very, very interesting to watch. It's and always you, amazing to me when a female-driven movie opens big at the box office and you see all of the articles and reviews about it and they're like, you know, oh, you know, a, a, a female-driven movie opened at $50 million at the box office. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, guys. Women exist, and they <laughs> watch movies, and they watch television. And I'm not trying to paint some picture of, like, you know, being some psycho-feminist or anything like that. But, you know, I think that uh, uh, it's important to listen to audiences. And when you hear people say over and over again, why aren't there more interesting parts written for women of a certain age? Why exactly. is it that you have to be 
20 years old to be interesting in Hollywood. And I did an interview recently where I, I admitted, I think that women are far more interesting when they're older than they are when they're in their 20s. Mm-hmm. And I'm a really big fan of aging gracefully. And, and, you know, I think it's very sexy when you see a 50 year old woman that hasn't had buckets of plastic surgery and has allowed herself to you know, wear her life on her face the way a man is entitled to. I I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And I think that you can be sexy and powerful at any age. And I'm not, I I, I hope this doesn't come off as like pandering to the women out there because I, I legitimately feel that way. We don't live in the town of Stepford. So I don't believe in, in writing parts like that. So that's some, that's one aspect of the show that I'm really, really proud of is that I've really tried to create some very compelling female characters and very compelling male characters that are just driven a little bit differently than they normally would be on TV. Now, speaking of the male characters, your character plays Martha Madison's husband on yeah. the show. And yeah. so what exactly oh. is Victor all about? Part of this dynamic is is that the over over the hundreds of years that this family has existed and that this company has existed, um, the men of the family are the actual physical candy makers. The women don't make candy anymore. They started off that way, but as it evolved, the men are the ones that make the candy, and the women are the ones that select the Winterthorn husbands. So off in the forest. There is a, a place where young men are trained in the art of making candy and how to be a proper Winterthorn husband. Um, it is a big honor to be selected as a Winterthorn husband, and it's a very competitive prize because, you know, it, it, it gives you an entryway into a world of, of extreme wealth and extreme luxury, but there's a price you pay for it. And my character, Victor, is a servant. Um, he was not groomed to be a husband for the Winterthorn women, um, but he falls madly in love with Miranda. It's, it's love at first sight. He absolutely has adored her from the first moment he laid eyes on her, and um, and you get to see kind of how they ended up together, and the fact that you know why she chose him, you know what was her drive behind it. So Victor, I would say, is is probably one of the nicer people on the show. And he's made a lot of sacrifices for his wife. And, and I think the thing that I love about the Victor Miranda relationship on Winter Thorn is that you get an example of, of a couple that goes through very traumatic events and very, very difficult moments. And yet they really love each other and they get very angry with each other, but there is a very deep, strong rooted love there. And, I think sometimes on shows, you know, when, when, soap, when soap couples sometimes have problems, the first inclination is, well, let's have them go cheat. Mm-hmm. Winterthorn is tricky because when you, and when you watch the show, it'll make more sense. You don't really have that option here. So they're forced to work through stuff. And, and, and you know, most people in life don't have that option of cheating or just running off or whatever. They have to deal with their problems. And, Mm-hmm. I, I think that that can be just as interesting as the whole, you know, having an affair or doing whatever. Right. I think sometimes it's also visually interesting to see two people really trying to work through all of the crap that they're thro- that's thrown at them to come out at the other side and almost rediscover the love that they have for each other. And, you know, Martha and I, uh, Martha and I have a really great working relationship with each other as actors. And I think that what's really nice What's really nice about it is because I'm not uh, the traditional soap stud or hunk or whatever, I think that when you watch us together, it is much more of a believable husband and wife. You, 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 you get past all the, the maybe the eye candy tropes that I think sometimes occur regularly, and you say, okay, let's look at these two as characters and as people and understand why they're with each other. And I, I, really, I really enjoy that about the show and... And it was it was fun to be Martha's husband, fake husband, because I like my real wife best. <laughs> and it's interesting how you were describing how men work to become a Winterthorn husband. Because in 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 hindsight, I was sitting there going like, okay, so basically they become a Winterthorn husband and be in a loveless marriage, whereas 
Victor comes along and Miranda and him are actually in a real marriage. They love each other. And that's what it just sounds like to me, that they 